Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. The first article is about an unexpected $1,100 bill from AWS from the following developer here that shared his journey on this site. The developer received a $1,100 AWS bill after following the company's official guide for setting up OpenSearch with AWS Amplify. It's the following guide here. They already updated the guide, so this issue should not happen or the user should be aware that this might happen. And this incident that the developer is reporting here occurred in October 2024 when he was building a simple application for testing using AWS cloud services. And two main issues caused the high charges. First, AWS Amplify automatically selected expensive server types and the system used the R5 large search instances costing over 130 US dollars per month instead of the cheaper option. And second, when developers stopped their test environment, the open search server kept running and charging money. And the problem got worse when the developer restarted their work. Each time they started the development environment again, AWS created a new server instead of reusing existing ones. And this meant multiple servers were running at the same time, each charging money. And AWS customer service refunded the charges and helped set up alerts to prevent future high bills. After the developer posted about this experience, uh, also AWS updated their guide to warn about these issues. And this event shows a common problem in cloud computing. Automated tools can hide expensive operations. And when developers use services like AWS Amplify, they might not see that multiple servers are running in the background. Even following official guides exactly can lead to unexpected costs. And AWS now recommends that all developers set up a budget alert before testing new services. They should also check the AWS console directly to make sure all new services are actually turned off. This incident affected one developer, but it reveals a wider issue about cloud computing cost. As more companies use cloud services, understanding how to manage and monitor these resources becomes increasingly important. And this article was also discussed on Hacker News on the following site here. And here I share this sentiment, billing alert or a joke, give us hard spending limits. A similar incident, um, although minor one, happened to me while also testing AWS services. I started with a free tier virtual machine for testing ECS and other services. And despite initially selecting a free tier instance, the VM somehow got upgraded and it was also running. And after a month, I found also unexpected around 50 US dollar of a charge on my credit card. And while this amount was much smaller, it shows how easily costs can accumulate without proper monitoring. AWS support handled my dispute professionally and charged back the 50 US dollars. And this raises an important point about cloud service billing. While AWS offers budget alerts, they don't provide hard spending limits. Such limits would protect users from unexpected charges, but might reduce AWS revenues. The impact of these charges varies significantly between individual developers and companies. Private developers often dispute these changes, in my experience, and while companies typically just fix the issue and move on, considering these costs a minor operational cost. This brings me to the second article. Microsoft has announced a 5% price increase for customers who pay monthly for their enterprise services. This will change in 
April 2025, as stated in this article here. The price increase affects many Microsoft services, including Microsoft 365, Office 365, Teams, Phones, and Microsoft Copilot. Customers who choose annual payments will not see any price changes, but they must pay the full amount upfront. Microsoft's strategy appears clear. They want to encourage customers to choose annual subscription over monthly payments. While the monthly option offers more payment flexibility, it will now come at a higher cost. And this is a valid strategy for cloud and um, software as a service businesses. When companies pay annually, they're not just committing money, they're committing to using Microsoft's ecosystem for an entire year. And once a company has their documents, communications and workflows in Microsoft system, switching to another provider becomes increasingly difficult and expensive. The next article is uh, quite interesting also for my students since they are working on creating a stablecoin system. In this article here, it's the following article, Tether, the largest stablecoin provider, has increased 1 billion worth of USDT on the Tron network. And this major transaction happened on November 14th, uh, two days ago. The Tron network has become increasingly important for stablecoin transactions, and it now handles nearly the same amount of USDT as Ethereum. Tron's popularity comes from its very low transaction fees, making it particularly useful in payments in developing countries. And the newly created 1 billion US uh, DTs is not immediately available. They're held in reserve until there's market demand. So what does it mean? The new stablecoin creation often signals trading interest. When companies mint more stablecoin, it usually means traders are preparing for market activity. The next article is about one of the core principles of blockchain. It's about append only. And um, if you do a mistake, you can lose the funds and those cannot be recovered anymore. And this happened to a crypto trader as reported here. So the crypto trader lost uh, roughly 26 million in US dollars in June due to a simple copy paste error. The trader accidentally sent um, over 7,900 Renzo restaked ETH to the wrong address by copying an incorrect contract address. And the trader is now offering a 2.6 million reward to white hat hackers who can help recover the funds by hacking the smart contract. After trying traditional recovery methods and contacting the Renzo protocol directly, they turn to social media for help. However, due to regulation limitations, even the protocol itself cannot assist in recovering the funds. And here I have two remarks. First, Traditional banking has built-in safeguards uh, that prevent or reverse many common mistakes. Crypto transfers should become equally user-friendly to encourage wider adoption. And second, the Renzo protocol claims they cannot help recover the funds due to regulatory limitations. This explanation raises question what specific regulations prevent returning funds sent to a wrong address. I have tried to find a statement from Renzo protocol, but I did not find any. The next article is about the crypto boom. Bitcoin recently reached over 91,000 US dollars and market analysts believe it could hit 100,000 US dollar this month. And this prediction comes from Bitcoin's strong performance in November. The recent price increase follows Donald Trump's election victory, which some experts think will lead to more cryptocurrency adoption in the United States. Other factors supporting Bitcoin's rise include expected cuts to interest rates and the upcoming Bitcoin halving, which will reduce the amount of new Bitcoins created. And we already see signs of adoption here. 
Pennsylvania lawmakers have proposed a new bill that would allow the state to invest in Bitcoin. The plan would let the state treasurer put up 10% of Pennsylvania's fund into Bitcoin, which could mean that buying 970 million US dollars worth of this cryptocurrency. However, uh, the Pennsylvania bill still needs to pass through multiple stages of approval, including reviews by the House and Senate. And similarly, the National Bitcoin Reserve Plan is still in its early stage. And the last article is now something completely different. It's a question and it's the following question here. Have AI coding tools killed the joy of programming? Well, in this article, a developer explains how their initial excitement about AI coding tools turned into disappointment. And he mentions, what I do now is type English sentences in increasingly desperate attempts to get ChatGPT the output I want. Well, I see this a bit differently and with Claude and ChatGPT, coding makes more fun because it can save you time to look for information you need. Once I have used GenAI for an extended period, I now have the feeling where Claude and ChatGPT can help and where not. And once you figure that out, your progress will be faster and getting the information faster makes much more fun than spending the time with boilerplate code.